Hello and welcome back to the Laravel series. Um, in this part we're going to actually install Laravel on our system. Uh, we're going to get our first project set up and I'm going to walk you through where everything is and how we can sort of get started. So first off jump over to the Laravel documentation and you want to head over to the installation page. I'll leave a link down there. Um, and it's really simple to get installed. So first off you need to have Composer and if you're not aware of what Composer is it's a PHP package manager. I've actually done a video about this before, so I'll put it up there in the top right. So if you don't already have Composer, just click on that video, go and watch that, and then come back here once you've got it installed. It's really simple, it'll take you like two minutes. Anyways, once you've got Composer, you, what you need to do is download the Laravel installer. So pull up a terminal and literally just copy and paste this line right here. Composer global require Laravel slash installer. Paste that in there. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna cancel that. And then once you've got Laravel installed globally, what you can do is you can create your first project. So to create a project, what you're going to do is Composer create dash project. And then you're going to go Laravel slash Laravel. So this is the actual package that we've just downloaded. And then we're going to name it. So I'm going to name mine uh, demo project. And what that will do is it will go and download all the latest Laravel files and it will set up your project, set up your environment variables, etc. And I'll come back when that's done. All right, awesome, it's done. Uh, now I'm gonna pull up PHP Storm, which is my IDE that I use. You can use any IDE, you can use Sublime Text, brackets, whatever, um, but I really suggest PHP Storm if you can. Uh, reason being is that PHP Storm has really good search functionality and Laravel has like hundreds of files. And so you will be searching quite a lot. And having that search bar to search for files is super useful. Anyways, we're gonna open up that project and I've got it right here, this demo project. So pull that up in PHP Storm. And here we go. So the first file that I'm going to show you is the .env file. This is the environment variables file. And this pretty much stores all of your configuration, or the main ones anyway. And what we're going to need here is the database connection. So go ahead, if you don't already have a MySQL database set up, go ahead and set one up on your local system. For me, I use MAMP, which gives me an Apache server and a MySQL server all in one. Although we won't be using the Apache server because Laravel comes with one built in. Uh, but the MySQL server we will definitely be using. So go ahead and set up your database connection details. Hopefully your MySQL installation will tell you this. Um, so my database, I'm gonna go and create one now. So I use a program called SQL Pro, and this is like a database manager. You can use PHP MyAdmin, you can use whatever you want, Navicat, uh, there's various others. Use whatever you want, just go and create a database. I'm gonna call it Demo Project, and that's all we need there. So database, name is Demo project and the username is root and the password is also root in my case. All right, and that's it for the environment variables. So that's the main file we need to edit now. I'm just gonna show you through all of the file structure um, and then we can get on with some actual coding in the next video. So the really important folders are the roots folder. Uh, so in here, the main ones you're gonna use is api.php and web.php. And routing in Laravel is basically how we say, if you get a request for this particular web address, then this is how we're going to handle it. So let's go into web.php. Uh, and by the way, the difference between web and API is web is like if one of your users comes to your site directly, an API is perhaps if you want to build some kind of API. That's the only really way I can put it. Um, but you'll see later on in this course how they work. So if you look inside this web.php, you'll see there is a default root. And this root is for the root directory. So slash, or we could put something else here like home, for example, if you want to handle slash home. And this assumes that it's a get request. And then when we get this request, we're gonna pass a function here and we will return, and you've always got to return something when you have a root. So we're gonna return a view. So view is a function which will return a view. Remember, like I said, the model view controller, this will literally just return a view and not do any sort of controller or logic. Um, I don't really think that makes sense at this point, but it will do. So where does this view actually come from? Where is this welcome view? So that takes us to the next part, which is the resources folder. And inside of here, the main one you'll need is the views folder. And inside of here, you will see that welcome.blade.php. So Blade is like a templating engine. Well, it is a templating engine, uh, which comes shipped with Laravel. And this allows us to have things like master pages and allows us to really nicely put inline PHP inside of our HTML files. Uh, again, we'll see more of this later on in this course. But what you need to know for now is that this welcome.blade.php file is this template. And you'll notice that we don't include the .blade.php extension because Laravel handles it all for us. If we had folders in here, so let's say we have a views, and inside of here we have a directory called 
um, dashboard maybe. And then the side of this dashboard one, we had a view called myaccount.blade.php. The way we'd reference this view is by going in here and typing in dashboard dot and then uh, my account. This could also be a slash, but I like to put it as dots. It doesn't really matter, just keep it consistent. And then that will find this uh, myaccount.blade.php. So let's test this out. Let's put some, this is my account. And then to actually test our Laravel project, um, remember I said it comes with a built-in web server. So just jump back into the command line, navigate to your Laravel project. So mine is called demo project, CD demo project. Then go PHP artisan serve. And you'll see that starts a Laravel development server at 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 8000. That's just the port that it puts on the end. All right, so let's jump back into Chrome and then we can go localhost 8000 and you'll see it says this is my account because it's returned this template. So dashboard.myaccount and it's found this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove um, this, this, this folder, the dashboard folder because we're not actually gonna be using it and just set this back to welcome. All right, so that's my short introduction to Blade templates. The next folder is the public folder, and this stores all of your sort of publicly accessible files. So your CSS files, your JavaScript. Uh, you'll see in here there's also a index.php file. Uh, it's really important that you don't touch this file because this is actually just what handles the first request into your homepage of your site, and then it will sort of redirect it through the Laravel system. Uh, honestly, you don't need to understand what this does. You just need to know that you don't touch it. All right, back into the root directory. So the database folder, uh, the main one we'll be using in here is migrations. Uh, migrations are, think of it like a set of instructions to build out a database. So you'll see in here that we have two migrations at the moment. So these uh, table.php files, if we pull one up, create users, and they have two functions in them, or two that we actually need, the public function up and public function down. Public function up is essentially when we build the database table. So you'll see we're creating a table called users and here you can see it's a table. And then we put all of our fields on here. And this comes in really handy because let's say you wanna collaborate on this one project. Uh, it's essentially like version management for databases. I think that's the best way to look at it. And then you can just execute a command in the command line and it will build out all of your database tables uh, based on this. The important thing to remember is this isn't like doing a SQL backup on your table. Uh, this is more like actually writing instructions for how to build the table. And then we have the down function, which literally just rolls back and removes the table. All right, that's it for that file. The next folder is the configuration folder. And inside of here, you'll see a lot of config files for various things, let's say auth. And there's a lot of settings that you might want to play around with, all just stored in arrays. And to be honest, I'm not too sure how much we're going to be getting into this folder. But this is more for an advanced thing. So if you in the future want to play around with the settings, go for it. And the final folder we'll be using is the app folder. And inside of this app folder, you'll find the models, which I explained a little bit in the last video. And there's also a HTTP folder, which contains the controllers and the middleware. So as I say, controllers is where you have all your logic. So you might have your authentication controllers here. You might have uh, your displaying a page controller, various things. They will all be found in here. And again, we'll be building those controllers using the terminal, using command line. And then you also have a middleware folder and middleware is like a middleman between a controller and actually executing that controller, if that kind of makes sense. So let's say you have a controller that's going to do, it's going to maybe show a page, for example. A middleware would say, well, before we're actually going to show the page, let's confirm that they're logged in. And it's a really nice, easy way of performing like validation before the actual controller is executed. As I say, if none of this is making sense, don't worry too much about it. It's just nice to get this general feel for it. Um, but of course, I will be re-explaining all of this in the next couple of videos. There's also a kernel.php file, which we might use. Uh, well, we will be using it for declaring middleware, uh, but we'll get into that again in the future. And that's pretty much all of the main files you're gonna be using in Laravel. There's a lot of other files which are used by the system, which we don't really need to worry about. That's all just a Laravel uh, project. There's a ton of other files that come with Laravel, which we don't really need to worry about because that's all handled for us. Um, but those are the main ones. And if you didn't catch any of that in this video, don't worry too much about it. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this video right here. In the next video, I think I'm gonna talk about routing. Uh, so if you're interested in carrying on with Laravel, be sure to go check that out.